Hello and welcome to Between Two Electrodes, an educational series for energy professionals. I'm your host, Jennifer Alfson, Product Marketing Manager at Fluids. In each series, I'll interview subject matter experts on interesting industry topics. In this series, we're going to focus on energy security in Europe. I'm joined today by Lars Stefan, Senior Manager of Policy and Market Development at Fluids. And our special guest is Gerard Reed, co-founder of Alexa Capital and co-host of Redefining Energy podcast. Well, thank you for joining us. Let's jump into our topic at hand. Why is energy storage so important to solving the European energy crisis? Maybe let me jump in there and say, listen, energy storage is important, not just for the EU energy crisis. It's always been important, right? You can't do anything without storing, right? You know, think of it from a basic level of food. You, what do you do with it? You store it in a cupboard, right? That's how we get our energy. I have wood outside so I can supply, supply heat for, for the family over the, over the winter months, right? And even in the electricity systems, the exact same thing. You need to make sure that, a, that at every moment, demand and supply across the power systems in balance. And we have spinning masses. We have turbines that spin to make sure that, uh, and we use this, we use this, the spinning, so-called spinning reserves in these turbines to, um, as, as energy storage, right? So it's critical to it. What I would say, if you're asking about um, the European energy crisis, it's been particularly helpful has been actually having batteries and a large amount of the systems across Europe over the last months. And the reason is because the stresses on the system have been so great that you have to you, you can have to do whatever you can to make sure demand and supply balance. So if you go to countries like the UK in particular, you know the island nations, yeah, batteries have been a really, really of great help to them in making sure that the, the system stays stable. Mm. And Lars, to date, has energy storage made an impact on the security of supply in the current energy crisis? Yeah, it has absolutely. So Gerard already mentioned two kinds of energy storage, like the, the spinning reserve, which is also in the thermal generators. But like energy storage has always been like, I want to say for more than a century, part of the energy system. As maybe not everybody thinks of it, but we have 65 gigawatt of energy storage in the energy system in Europe, which is 90% pumped hydro. And these pumped hydro assets over the last year, they were pumping energy for forth and back, keeping the system stable and providing critical energy uh, when prices were high. When we look at battery storage, we have roughly around five gigawatt of battery storage in our energy systems. Ireland, UK are, are big ones. And in these markets, almost all of the frequency relation services are today provided by battery storage. So we're really getting to a point where battery storage is becoming a critical element of the power system and the power system will not work without battery storage anymore. So definitely a critical element to provide security of supply in Europe. Gerard, how can storage lower the cost of renewable integration going forward? Yeah, that's a, that's a really, really great question. I, I, if you look at renewables and we're talking really about wind and solar, they're weather dependent. So then what do you do when you don't have any solar money, any wind? Well, guess what? You need you need to have the electricity comes from somewhere else. Well, the obvious place for that to come is from uh, is from is true storage, right? So you store it somewhere. And as Lars just said, actually, we're already doing this already in a momentary basis because actually, the easiest and quickest and most effective way to make sure that that supply and demand are balancing there at this on a, on this momentary basis is with batteries, right? So I look forward and I say, yeah, batteries are, in, and storage in general, critical part of not just security of supply, but I would actually say resilience in the system and affordability without a doubt. Yeah, you're seeing, you know, you're seeing, uh, if I look in terms of storage going forward, you're going to have storage everywhere. You're going to have people are putting storage in their homes. You're putting storage in, in the form of electric car. So if I look go forward, I think we're going to have, Storage, storage, and more storage. There's just no way around it. And same question to you, Lars. How can storage lower the cost of renewable integration going forward? 
I, th I think I, I agree with Gerard. And, and I think that like one very early reaction to the energy crisis was the Repower EU package where we said, listen, to get independent from energy imports, we need to generate more renewable electricity ourselves and fast track the, the build out of renewable assets in Europe. So what happened with market analysts like IHS Market or Bloomberg and Energy Finance, based on the Repower EU, they doubled their forecast for energy storage in Europe because they say you cannot build renewables without energy storage. And that is actually, we actually need more than just storage. We also need grid because when we generate renewables, we need to transport it somewhere. But then we need storage to provide this flexibility um, to move it around from a time of generation to time, time of consumption. So this is the energy shifting element, but then also the system stability element. And Gerard just mentioned it. And, and as you are from Ireland. So in Ireland in February, um, 85 percent of the load in Ireland was covered by wind. And that was only possible. I mean, Ireland is an island, right? They're not interconnected like the big countries and con on the continent. So they need to balance their system themselves. And they have this really advanced suit of system stability services called DS3 services, where batteries will have to react within 150 milliseconds. So really in a, in a, in a blink of an eye. And this is only possible, this high amount of renewable generation or integration due to battery storage and their capability to react really, really fast to what's happening on the system. So more renewables will have to come with more storage. And, and that's how we get the costs and energy security done. And looking to the future, how can storage contribute further to the security of supply? Uh, so, so I think it's the critical element. And I, I, the reason I say that is because what we need in going forward is we need resilience in the system. And because the whole electricity system in Europe is interconnected, what that means is that if there's a problem up in Norway, you feel it down in Spain, right? So then to make sure that that problem in Spain, isn't, which might be very serious, does not impact Poland, what you need to do is be able to island that system out. And that means putting in storage. That's for me resilience. So I, I see I see storage really, really, really critical in terms of security of supply. And by the way, it's the exact same thing in the oil space, right? If you, if you look at if you look in the United States, they have an oil reserve, right? They have a strategic reserve of oil. So it's an, for me, this is part of energy na of national security. We have to make sure that we have resilience in the system because none of us can afford to have no electricity. So critical part, I would say, of, uh, of energy security going forward is, 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 is integration, not just renewables, but a storage into the future system. Yeah, I would add to that. Um, I think I would absolutely agree on, on, on the holistic view. The question that we, of course, always have, what is the market mechanism which ensures security of supply. And that is in, in many markets around Europe, capacity markets. Capacity markets are also known as resource adequacy, for example, in the US, where basically a central entity is procuring um, the capability of, of certain cap generators or, or other assets to provide electricity. And in Europe, we have different capacity markets and different geographies. Not every country has one, but we have capacity markets in the UK, in Ireland, in Italy, in Belgium, and in France. And in each of those markets, energy storage has been awarded contracts to, pro to provide secure capacity, which is really showcasing that energy storage as an asset has arrived in, in, in the market process for energy storage. At the same time, it's also true that a lot of gas assets are being awarded or even assets which have a, a larger fossil footprint. And I think we really need to understand how can we create a, a low carbon um, energy system, which also has low carbon capacity in the system. And I think energy storage will play a major role in that. I think there's another element as well, where we can put it very, very precisely on a project basis. So Fluence is currently building a project in Lithuania. It's a 200 megawatt battery, and it will be built to serve as an instantaneous power backup for the whole Baltic grid. The context of this project is that the Baltic grid at the moment is still synchronized with the Russian grid, which from a security of supply perspective is, of course, highly critical. The Baltic states are currently synchronizing with the continental European grid. But 
they will only have like a, Dutch, uh, a double circuit line connecting them to the synchronous area and that line could fail. And therefore they need really fast reacting capability in their grid and they choose to build battery storage as a basically as a backup to the to the Baltic grid. And I think this is a this is a very nice because it shows us now how energy storage really contributes to energy security and as of national importance to this country and to that region, which is exciting for us to be part of that. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Lars and Gerard, for sharing your expertise with us and giving us context on how important energy storage is to solving this crisis in the European market. If you enjoyed this video on energy security, please check out the full series on our blog on the Fluence website for more in-depth information. There's additional videos and some more context there. Please like and share with your colleagues uh, to help share the knowledge and stay tuned for our future segments of Between Two Electrodes. Thank you.